a defensive predator with a venomous bite and an arsenal of thousands of sting-inducing hairs. This arachnid is the protagonist of many a scary story, but deep down they're just soft, vulnerable and misunderstood. Keep watching to discover why my tarantula is lying motionless on her back. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Lindsay, this is Miller's Critter Cabin, and in this short video, meet my Brazilian white knee tarantula, Lydia. Acanthoscuria geniculata, the Brazilian white knee tarantula a New World Tarantula native to the Amazon Basin of Northern Brazil. In the wild, Lydia would be accustomed to the abundant rainfall of such a tropical climate. Here in the forest of Boland, UK, we're also accustomed to abundant rainfall, however, not so much the tropical temps. So, Lydia lives in a 9-litre tub in my reptile room with an ambient room temperature of around 21 degrees C and a heat mat to the back wall of her enclosure. A Brazilian white knee tarantula, Lydia is a rich black colour with distinctive white bands on her legs indicative of the name. Covered in pinky coloured urticating hairs, this species is somewhat defensive and when irritated she'll use her rear legs to flick those hairs into the air behind her to deter whatever it is that's annoying her. This flicking, it creates the bare patches you can see on her bum, but these hairs will be refreshed when she next molts. Stick around as I'll be showing you a molt later in this video. Urticating hairs are very irritating to human skin and eyes, causing intense itching, so we have to be careful to avoid these if she flicks them into the air. At around one year old and being female, Lydia is larger and more intensely coloured than a male would be, and she can expect to grow to a leg span of as much as 8.5 inches within three to four years of age. As well as growing bigger than their male counterparts, females also live longer and can live as much as 20 years, compared with just 4 years for a male. Tarantulas use their hairs to sense vibrations and their feet to check they are on safe ground. And whilst one of the hardier tarantula breeds, they are still delicate and susceptible to damage if they fall, so we always use a soft brush to gently encourage her to move if we need to transfer her to another tub to clean or upgrade her enclosure as we're doing here. The enclosure should ideally provide width rather than height as these spiders don't do well when falling from heights. Being quite heavy bodied they can rupture their abdomen and die. We fill the enclosure with deep substrate and provide a hide as well as a water dish. As you can see we've upended and submerged a plant pot for a hide, covered it in sphagnum moss to help maintain humidity. As you can see here, tarantulas are wary of misstepping. They're aware of their own vulnerability and it's unlikely, although not completely unheard of, that your tarantula would ever risk their safety by launching out of their enclosure.
once safely back in her enclosure, Lydia soon gets to webbing the entrance to her hide. We'll be adding some foliage here for extra cover later. We feed Lydia weekly with dubia roaches from our own colony, as well as locusts. Brazilian white knee tarantulas are aggressive eaters and will almost always pounce on any prey which enters their habitat. They'll eat regularly and ferociously, only hesitating to have a meal generally when they're pre-molt. Even the occasional mouse is a treat when one of our snakes refuses a meal. Tarantulas will strike their prey at lightning speed, sinking their fangs into their meal and delivering a fatal dose of venom which incapacitates before enzymes in the venom then break down the meal ready for consumption. Now someone new to tarantula keeping could be alarmed to find their beloved pet laying on its back, seemingly motionless. Having exoskeletons, arachnids like Lydia need to shed their skin as they grow, and youngsters molt more frequently than older ones. At around one year old, Lydia molts every three to four months, which will reduce over time to only maybe every year or two eventually. Molting is an impressive process, but one which leaves the tarantula vulnerable as they typically lay on their backs and can take up to a whole day to complete as they shrug off the old exoskeleton to reveal a new larger but soft exoskeleton beneath. As you can see, Lydia prepares well for this traumatic experience by weaving a bed of web to lay upon so she can molt comfortably. And here we have the complete molt, empty of spider but convincingly whole and fascinating to look at. Carapace has come away from the rest of the body to reveal the inner chambers of the exoskeleton. And just look at those fangs. Just the same as most undomesticated and even some domesticated pets, these spiders can bite when provoked. But hair flicking is their go-to defence, only biting when significantly threatened. Their venom is not considered medically significant, however it will definitely ruin your day and leave you with some tissue damage, so it's best to just handle her with care and mindfulness at all times. 
Freshly malted, Lydia's colours are vibrant and will wait up to a week to introduce live prey to ensure her exoskeleton has time to harden and she's protected before her next meal. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and coming up in my next video. We'll be feeding our boa constrictors.